A couple years back, I was driving a 2004 Honda Odyssey, which I added a bed platform to the back of and used for a couple of camping trips. But unfortunately, the transmission died on the way out to a camping trip, so I figured it was probably about time to retire that car and look for another one. I was already planning for the next camper vehicle, and my expectation originally was that I wanted to get a Ford Transit, and eventually started designing an actual camper in CAD for my Transit. But it turns out that Ford Transits are actually super expensive, as most cargo vans are for some reason. So because of the price and wanting to have more off-road and hauling capability, I ended up with a 2023 Toyota Tacoma. Pretty much as soon as I brought the car home, I was already planning on how to put a camper on the back. Building a truck camper was a bit more daunting because I had to actually build the whole structure of the thing as well, in addition to the interior. So my design started off pretty basic and then got more and more complicated as time went on. One design choice that I was really interested in that I didn't see a lot of DIY campers do online was have a fully unobstructed back opening. A lot of campers you have to crawl on your hands and knees to get into and I wanted to remove that back support beam that goes across the top of the camper to allow you to walk fully upright into your camper and ideally have a good view when you get to a campsite. I decided the best course of action was to build the thing out of a aluminum extrusion frame. This stuff is lightweight and super easy to customize. I made really specific measurements for the exact amount of bolts I would need and the exact connectors I would need. The aluminum was one of the more expensive parts of this build, so it was a little daunting to start buying stuff outright, but once materials started arriving, I got super excited and have been heads down in this build ever since. Today's the day. Starting the cutting, starting the building. I'm a little nervous. Hopefully now I should only measure a thousand times cut once. I have four that are 59 and four that are 59 and a half. I got these end fasteners um, that are supposed, supposed to attach through one piece of aluminum into the top of another piece. And you're supposed to tap this end hole, which I've done. You can see threads in there now. And then this guy slides in like that. And then from the top, get screwed in like that. Here's the last cut. Just testing the fit here. Here's where I'm at. I got the front rigged up. 
and attached with uh, two connectors that way. Pretty exciting to see it come together. I'm getting the top part of the camper put together now. That just gives it a little extra strength so that it's not gonna topple over. I wanted to just share these roll-in T-nuts that have a little ball. So instead of having to slide them in the end, they just kind of pop right in like that. The only areas that are getting these security bolts are the hinges in the front because they'll be exposed and then the hinges for the windows on the side. Which will also be exposed. these probably out of steel or something so my idea here is that the door is gonna have a catch that's gonna close and as that's gonna close it's gonna sync up with a bolt that's gonna go all the way through from this side and make contact with that and then you're gonna have a lever that's gonna pull down here and then really snug this side up. And then once that's attached, it should hopefully keep everything tight and locked in. And then these hinges will be 270 hinges. So instead of being mounted on the face like this, they'll be mounted in between. So they'll be mounted in the seam here and then open up a full 270 degrees so that this door will be able to lay flush against this wall here all the way out and lock in right here set up here because I'm putting a porthole window in the front that I want to have line up with the front or the back uh, window there on the truck. bottom of the window and here's the top of the window so this is well placed I think here's the roof of the car and then there's the antenna I think that should be fine to torque everything down. So unfortunately that's gonna mean I have to undo all of the bolts and then redo them and I'm gonna put thread locker. Also I paid a lot extra for these T-nuts that go in and have this ball that locks your T-nut into place. However, they're kind of fiddly and they just sort of don't really stick all the way sometimes. Some of them have good tension and then some of them just pop in and drop all the way down. So 
For the money, I don't know that it's worth it because they're not really consistent. I was able to order a grid wall, which is usually used in like retail for hanging up uh, clothes or, you know, pop-up store type stuff. Uh, but this is all raw steel that I got online for actually pretty cheap. I'm going to chop this up and then weld pieces of flat bar steel to it and then mount that to the walls of my camper to add a little bit more rigidity where those walls have some flex currently. So doing that today. Did some Googling around uh, town where I live here and found that there was a shop space that had a uh, membership. So I immediately joined so that I could get some fabrication done. They've got some really cool stuff here. that I just made. Here it is, and it looks really cool, but I'm already finding some problems. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna have to do some modifying to get everything to work the way I think it should. I'm happy to say that it does at least fold flat like I was expecting, so that's really cool. Now I just gotta sort out the wiggle that you can see there. I've been working on the camper on the ground all this time. Uh, so I'm gonna build a base for it. I'm just getting the casters on and then I'm gonna tie some uh, supports, some diagonal supports in to the sides. It's looking pretty good. I kind of came up with this uh, just little extra leg here to give a little bit of support while I'm working on this door because it's very hard to frame it up and put it all together. But here's my hinge. Uh, here is this sort of support brace I made. Don't look at my welds. I'm not a welder. So I'm sure unsurprisingly to no one, um, this massive door is creating a lot of stress both for me and for the camper i'm not sure if i'm gonna have to abandon this door idea it's been a couple weeks i've been thinking about how to resolve the issue uh, of the like top part of the camper racking when the big heavy door opens. And my solution is I'm gonna try to create a tie rod. This, which I'm going to attach to the metal rod by tapping a hole and then screwing this in so that I have a uh, adjustable length. And then this should just snap right in and then hopefully tie this end all the way over to this end, which I have this uh, sort of cletus hitch is what it's called. And then that will allow me to undo that end and swivel the whole thing upright and use it as support going up and down for when the camper is open.
disregard these wooden pieces. Those are just spacers. And the camper's open and it connects to those points. Unfortunately, I thought a lot about it and I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the big single rectangular door work. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is cut this right in half and then do two sort of double doors, one that opens to each side of the camper. It's already looking like it's going to be a much better situation because there's not going to be a bunch of leverage on one side. It's not screwed in, so obviously it's kind of bowing a little bit, but don't worry about that. I'll be fixed once I get the fasteners and stuff on. And so a lot less tension on those walls now. I am in the process of making my new hinges. All things considered, I think they turned out pretty good. Um, so they'll fold flat and then open up to be 270. I'm cutting off just a tiny little bit from each side because I'm having some clearance issues. Uh, and then mounting everything back up to see how it looks. I've got a nice little gap now, which I can adjust with this cable. And these open all the way out nicely. I'm just rigging up this little door catch and it works surprisingly well. It opens up and locks keeps the door from opening all the way up and then you just lift it up and push it over whenever you want it to open the full length. It's paint day! I'm going through and cleaning up all the rust and all the last little bits off of uh, these pieces and uh, then I'm going to go over there in the spray paint tent and do some spray painting. is on. Getting my brackets all sorted. I'm trying to get these new holes to be sort of aligned. And so I bought these clamps that uh, had another piece that went with it. Unfortunately they were too small for what I needed so I got these big steel angles. These guys are all clear coated and now these are just hit with their second coat of this black. I'm in the process of making these brackets for my little latches. Here are all those brackets that I just ended up making. So those just uh, clamp down like that. And those are gonna be handy to keep the doors from bouncing up and down when I'm driving down dirt roads and stuff like that. So those two will go there and then one will go here to keep the, uh, the pop up down too. I think I've gotten to the point with my build that I am done with the frame. So I'm figuring out the exact size for the panels. I think I'm actually gonna end this video here uh, with the frame and then I'll continue on to a part two and likely three and four for the uh, panels and then again for the fabric. And then I'll probably do another one for the drawer pullouts and things like that. I've already got a ton of footage building up just for this part alone. So I think I'm going to start offloading some of that. So keep your eyes peeled for, uh, for video two on the panels coming up next.